Welcome to Channel A Mac, your insight to the Australian visa system. Good day everyone, my name is Carl Young, your online YouTube visa consultant. Are you interested about migrating to Australia? Why don't you consider to subscribe to my channel and turn on the bell on the side so once we have all the updates and news, you'll be the first one of getting all the insight. Now, thanks for clicking through this video. Now, uh, what we're going to talk about uh, and discuss is obviously the skill assessment. Now, it's very vital for general skill migration that uh, the skill assessment play a vital role. Despite the migration review report uh, talks about uh, abolishing occupation list for the employment sponsor. That means there's no more uh, skill assessment required for employment sponsor. Now it's it's already like that for the current for a two visa, so uh, abolishing it is fine. But if you want to go through independence, skill migration, or perhaps a state nomination in subclass one nine zero, you still require to go through skill my skill assessment. Now I wonder whether they will still put a mandatory and compulsory requirement for skill assessment under the one eight six direct entry because traditionally it requires, and so was for four nine four. Don't know about that one. That's the question mark on that. But anyhow, we will see what happens when the new policy announces. Now talking about skill assessment, it's vital because、uh, if you have followed my Channel long enough, you notice that、uh, the first ever required things. Well, obviously, English requirement is pretty obvious, but again, skill assessment is vital as well because you, if you don't have a skill assessment, no matter how good you are, your portfolio, how beautiful your portfolio is, you have nothing to do with skill assessment in Australia with skill migration. So,、um, you really need to get it done. And now this video, we're going to talk about some of the commonly mistakes that actually triggers the rejection that you get a negative result for your skill assessment. That I'm going to talk talk to you about. So make sure if you you know getting ready yourself,、uh, prepared, and you wanted to lodge your skill assessment, you need to get these right. Now, first of all, let's、uh, let's have a look at the、uh, occupation. Now, obviously, you need to pick the right. Occupation. Now, I've been,、uh, you know, commonly asked about some some people. They graduated from A qualification, and obviously they have jumped into a B occupation for the actual employment. That was pretty common. So they asked me, well, whether or not I actually meet that requirement or the other one.、Uh, now it's tricky. Now for people like this. It's better that they actually go for employment sponsor for the new policy because for skill assessment it really looks into your whole portfolio, your background. If your qualification is not the thing, for example, you study、um, accountant and you work as a chef. Now, if you want to go through skill assessment, none of this will actually get you the positive result. So you really need to get that. Clearly done. Now in our channel, we actually、uh, done a lot of explanation for a lot of different type of、uh, occupation. You may want to do a little search on that one. Now, why am I on this page? This page is called so th- with a title skill occupation list. Now it's very easy to find. All you need to do is go to Google and you know punching home affairs and skill occupation list. This will actually allow you to find out whether your occupation is. Actually, in the list. Now, make sure you you gotta be in the list because if you, you if your occupation is not in the list, well, definitely that you, there's nothing gotta be be done or related to your、uh, perhaps your your foreseeable hope on skill migrations.、So、you really need to do some search.、Uh, whether it's gotta be chef or cook,、uh, you punch in, and the search engine will actually drive you to the actual result. Now, the only problem with this is. It doesn't give you the description. For example, accommodation ho- hospitality manager. Well, it is in, in subclass one nine zero four zero seven four eight nine four eight two blah 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 and goes and go for so on and so forth. But it doesn't tell you the description. How 
one could actually meet the accommodation and hospitality manager uh, the requirements. So all you need to do next is you need to really go into ENS Code Dictionary, which is uh, set up by the government of Australia. Uh, so you can see on the top left, Australian Bureau of Statistics, and there's a little search panel. Now, how do we get to this web page? Pretty easy. All you need to do is Google ENS Code, A N Z S C O, and you They'll, they'll find you this page and again it's pretty um, useful now that they pre obviously in, in, in previous version it wasn't as convenient as now all you need to do is you know copy and paste of that occupation and punch in enter it should get you to the actual occupation straight away and it will have description there now you will say if you're in Australia you require to get through these kind of qualification in New Zealand you get this kind of qualification and your work detail has to include these detail in there and there's some subcategory for example if you're in a cafe and restaurant you click on it you go in there and you, again it will tell you your task require your responsibility required to be done in a daily basis so if you read through this the task includes and you ask yourself whether or not you have actually your job actually done those tasks now if you haven't done it obviously you won't meet those requirements so i got people coming in they uh they are pretty innovative uh they were studying um you know uh just giving you an example uh they were studying it ict before and they were entrepreneurial so they opened a little cafe shop and start roasting coffee and things so uh they came to me and say well can do i meet the production manager because i'm actually producing goods now Again, you need to really go into the ENS code and read it because production manager, I know that person is actually producing something, but production manager is more about a production line, you know, in a factory, in a manufacturing, um, you know, plant, okay? It's not just a, a little coffee shop and roasting your coffee beans. That, that won't meet the requirement. Although in the English dictionary, yes, you're, pro you're producing stuff, but for the actual description of production manager is totally different okay so you really need to go in there and have a look on that one now secondly the most common uh mistake that people make i would say it's about the uh <clears throat> the, the the income evidence of income uh, why do i say that now uh obviously if you want to migrate to australia unless uh, your country use uh, you know commonly use english uh, but if your your language used in the country that you're origin with uh, is not English, you need a translation. And obviously, if you're going through the bank statement, sometimes it's really, really messy and you don't need to translate all the things that you spend on the daily lives. All they wanted to prove is your income. So all you need to do is circle those parts or highlight those parts that is actually your income and you need to actually accrue a lot of these stuff the easier and and, and once you get that done uh, you send it to a naughty translator now the easier way on this one is that obviously produce uh, uh the tax document so uh, you work you're being employed you're paying tax the tax document will usually uh will be required to be translated and will usually and straight away depict how much earning you have made for particular uh, well, job or employment. So that would be an easier, much better way to actually um, present your how your income is. Now, there's a category of people. Uh, they are pretty. They are very skillful, uh, skilled migrant definitely. Uh, but what's happening is in the past, uh, they were only taking cashes. Okay. And that's a big problem. And so you, you did not declare your tax, uh, whether your employer or yourself agree not to do it. Uh, and that would be a problem. That, that, will, that will really be uh, something that uh, uh, skill assessing authority may reject you because they, they don't have a third party evidence to, to actually prove you've actually done it. Uh, and that will be an issue there. So then if that's an issue, you require to demonstrate a lot more uh, than what you have actually achieved. Now, some occupations is easy to demonstrate. For example, graphic designer, they will have a lot of project to show. But some occupation, for example, if you're an accountant 
or programmer, how do you how do you demonstrate that? That would that would be another huge issue on how trapping people into a, a negative result on skill assessment. Now, last but not least is the uh, word references. Now, I wanted to point to you is uh, this sample here. Now, this sample is provided by uh, Vet Assess. So, uh, if, if, when you want to get a reference letter, make sure you have all these elements in there. So, I'm going to take you into detail and let me magnify that. So, at the top, you really need to have an the, the employer's official letterhead. Now, some people may say, but my, my boss or my previous employer had uh, business closed. Uh, they're no longer trading. Uh, what do I do with it? Now, that will be a hard part to demonstrate as well because it's, it's not the assessing authority not to trust you, but if you don't provide anything, how can they assess it? You know, it's, it's like going into a university and you wanted to apply for a certain course and the course requirement is that you need to meet uh, the IELTS test of 6.5 and you basically tell them that no, I, I, I cannot find any test center, I cannot do any test. Now, obviously, the, the ultimately, the, the university admission officer will going to reject you for, for such an offer because you just cannot provide anything. So same thing. You, re you really need to get this done. So um, you get the employer and they need to have an official letterhead. Now, how does the official letterhead look like? It's, it's everywhere. It's usually have a logo, uh, the business name, company name, company registra registration number, uh, there's going to be tax ID, uh, address, telephone number, email, website, you know, something like that you will usually see on the letterhead. You know, if you go to the bank, very easy. You see your bank statement at the top. They will always have the banking brand and whatever the branch address, what are in the details. So you really need to get a letterhead. Now it has to have a date written on it. So some reference letter is without dates. Now office is going to reject you on that one because they, they don't know whether that's a, uh, that's a fact information or it's, you know, uh, again, I'm going to talk about a little bit on this now. We notice there's chat GPT now. There has been a lot of things can be done with one click now, right? So the office is getting more, you know, they need to go in deep detail because things can be done by AI and they need to verify. So you really need to have those things done properly and professionally, okay? You need to have the address to whichever the uh, skill assessing authority is and you basically follow this format. This is certified somebody, some who and who has been employed for certain, uh, whatever the occupation job title is, a certain period of time. Now, period of time, make sure date, month, and the year are in there. I've seen some reference that only have month and year. Now, why is it so important? Because they're also calculating how much work experiences that you actually have because that will count towards your skill migration points, right? So you really need to have a date, month, and a year, okay? And it needs to depict whether you were full-time or part-time, or perhaps it can mention how many hours per week. That can also be done as well, all right? And the description of what you, the responsibility of your job really needs to be there because they were required to go on this and then go back and match whether or not you meet the ends code descriptions now if you if you if you declare that you're a chef but you are, you're only taking cash cashier works and do a minor uh you know uh kitchen works then obviously you're not a chef so so they really need to talk, go go into that detail there and finally last but not least the the, the the person, whether it's going to be your boss, previous boss, or the HR manager, they really need to have their name there, signed with the clear contact detail at the bottom there as well. So again, that's the major three things that I've seen for the pr previous, I don't know, 10, 20 years, uh, how people are making mistakes and getting a negative result. So I wanted to have this video out there so you don't make that mistake in the future. Anyhow, should you have more questions, query, more than welcome to leave comment right down below. And I'll see you next video. Goodbye.